All right, all right. Hey there, YouTube. How's it going? Morty here, otherwise known as Goon, otherwise known as Matt. How's it going? I hope you guys are all doing well. Today we are going to be doing the third installment in my acronym review series. This time we'll be talking about the P26S, one of my favorite pants that I have. And the reason that I'm talking about these, instead of actually going into the 3A1L2 like I kind of hinted at in my last videos, is because these pants are actually on their way out. They're going to a buddy down in Australia, William. Shout outs to you if you're watching this video. Uh, but these are on their way out, so because these are on their way out, I thought I would make a video on them before they're gone. Uh, I like them a lot, but they're a part of a trade, and I, I like those pants too, so I might do a video about those, but we'll see what's up. Um, long story short, I wanted to make a video about these before they are out of my hands. I felt like I needed to document them. I felt that call to document these guys. So um, without further ado, let's get into the details of the acronym P26S. So I did a lot of research actually trying to find a legitimate description for the P26S on multiple websites where it was sold, that type of thing, to see if I could get a very in-depth description like I did for the P27 video, which I recommend you go check out. And I actually couldn't find a acronym branded description for these pants. So I just have to kind of create a general description for the pants of my own volition, and hopefully that works out for you guys. But um, yeah, without further ado, let me get into the details of these pants. So the P26S are a pair of Gabardine Stotts Etta Proof Cotton Flight Pants. They are modeled after a vintage flight pant. So the pants have a belted waist, two zippered three-dimensional pockets on the front of either leg. They have a large exposed zipper running down the front of the pants. They have two zippered cuffs at the bottom of the pants, as well as medial stitch work jogger cuffs. These pants also have the distinct acronym foam pocket that comes on a majority of their pants, except these pants have two foam pockets and they're located just under the three-dimensional pocket. So a big reason that I actually like these pants is probably one of the most obvious details and it's something that I think could turn heads and it can turn people onto the pants but also turn them off is this large exposed zipper on the front and that is a prime detail that comes on a lot of flight pants. It's something that a lot of flight pants like to do. Flight pants in general are something that are explored seldomly within the fashion realm. I know Issei Miyake has done flight pants in the past as well as Helmut Lang and some other more, more cutting edge designers. With all that in mind though, I do really like how Acronym decided to tackle the flight pant and I think that they were able to imbue their ethos into a interesting pair of pants that works well in the context of their brand. Flight pants obviously being a type of pant that were born out of the military or military use have an aesthetic way that they can just work into the acronym look, being that acronym takes a lot of inspiration from military wear. So to see them actually completely redo a pair of military pants is nice to see. And it's interesting to see how they imbued some of the industrial design things that they like to work on into the pants themselves. So without further ado, let's take a, a little bit of a deeper look into some of those details. So starting from the top and going down, we've got belted loops up at the top, which is pretty typical for a majority of pants. A lot of acronym pants, like I've mentioned in my last video, have a draw cord waist or some iteration of a draw cord waist. But with these pants, they have the belted loop so you can run a normal belt like you would through any of your other pants or like a pair of P23s or another pair of acronym pants that actually have belt loops. Uh, the thing that I like about these belt loops though, and it's something that I always kind of look out for whenever I look at a pair of pants, is that they have little extra belt loops just under the main large belt loop so that you can put keys, a carabiner, or something else similar just onto the belt loop and it has its own little reinforced section. So gotta give a little bit of a nod to that. That's one of my favorite details on pairs of pants in general. Going immediately down from that, like I mentioned beforehand, we've got a lot of nickel plated exposed zippers. The first two are on the three dimensional pockets. These are two diagonal zippers that run along either side of the thigh and they can be zipped up and zipped down relatively easily. They are YKK zippers, so they run very smoothly. These are something that you actually see on a lot of flight pants because flight pants in general have these zippers so that when you are a pilot and you're sitting in a plane, you can put stuff into your pockets and 
zip them up so that if you're doing any zero G activity or uh, going upside down in some facet, the contents won't fly out of your pocket. So you have a zipper to be able to keep all of those contents in there safely, securely, what have you. So you can completely focus on flying. I don't think anybody who's wearing acronym is necessarily flying. If you are, make yourself known down in the comment section, but the detail is still nice and I've actually used that when I've gone on roller coasters, so. Dude, Errolson, big roller coaster fan. Hell yeah, brother. On the front, we've got one of the most kind of polarizing details, I think, which is the big exposed nickel plated fly zipper on the front. This is obviously being a little bit polarizing because it does give you a lot of attention right there in the middle, but at the same time, it's really not that big of a deal. This is definitely one of those items where if you're wearing it out in person, it's not gonna attract as much attention as you would think by having that thing in the front. It seems really dazzling from the product photos and other photos similarly, but it's really something that's a lot more minimal in person and that was something that I learned when I picked them up. I was kind of iffy about it when I bought them, but seeing them in person, my perspective totally changed. Just horizontal to the end of the exposed zip fly, we have the dangling portions at the end of the three-dimensional pockets. Compared to the size of deep pockets that end up on a lot of acronym pants, these are a little bit more conventional. These don't necessarily get as much space as those might. You can still get a large amount of stuff into these pant pockets, and I think that they are nice regardless. But if you look just under the flap of that three-dimensional pocket, you've got a foam pocket, which, like I mentioned earlier, is something that Acronym is known for across all of their pants. Like I've mentioned before, foam pocket is tailored to the exact specs of a phone or an iPhone or a smartphone that is relatively slim. You can slip it in there with relative ease, and your phone can come in and out at your pleasure and leave your hand pockets completely free so you can keep them in there uninhibited. The thing that I really like about these foam pockets is that it's got the extra little tail end of the three-dimensional pocket covering the entrance to the foam pocket. So it's nice to know that my foam pocket is not gonna slip out in any circumstance. I know that the foam pocket normally is really secure and it will not let my phone go loose, but on these pants, it's kind of like doubling down. You, you know for a fact that your phone is not going anywhere. And the thing too is that if you are a lefty, you have been thought of. For once, you have been thought of. These pants have foam pockets on both thigh, both under the tail end of the three-dimensional pocket. This is pretty nice because I actually end up utilizing one of the foam pockets for my sunglasses, and I use the other foam pocket, obviously, for my phone. So I get that little added functionality there. The pants are relatively simple in terms of construction. There's not a lot of knee articulation like you see on some of the other more popular acronym pant models. It's pretty straight cut. The only detail that you'll see coming from the pockets all the way down to the end of the leg is this medial stitch that runs on the front and back of the leg. It just kind of gives a little bit of extra structure to the whole leg of the pant. And then at the very tail end of the cuff, this is where we start to see some details again. We've got the zipper cuff, like I mentioned, as well as this jogger cuff. Now, I'm not usually a guy who's really about joggers. Joggers have never really quite been my thing. I, I did like Fear of God for a little bit back in 2016, 2017 when I was picking up clothes, but it, it's still, even then, I wasn't really about it. So getting these pants, I was kind of iffy about like, oh man, do I really want like a jogger pant, that kind of thing. But like I mentioned earlier, this zip cuff actually gives you a multitude of ways that you can have the pants silhouetted and the way that it fits overall just based upon the zip cuff and I really actually like that. And it makes the jogger aspect of it there when I want it to be, but it takes on some other looks that we'll see when I show you guys how I style these pants. Now if you've had a pair of Akron Prestos, you might be familiar with this functionality, but the zipper cuff is a YKK zipper, zips up and down like it typically would, but the YKK zipper that they've implemented onto these pants actually locks when you have it in the up setting. Setting, I guess that works. Up setting. Um, so yeah, we'll go with up setting. When the zipper is down, it unzips like how you normally would want it to, and I'll show some of that in the B-roll, but when it's up, it locks. So if you want the zipper to sit in a specific way, like for example, you want it to be halfway up and then this allows for the pants to have a multitude of fits in the leg. So if I wanted the pant to have like a little bit of a wider fit, I can pull the zipper up to the halfway mark, not all the way up, not all the way down, halfway. And then I can lock the zipper by pushing it upward. And then that way it'll give me a little bit of, a little bit of give, but not all the way. And I think that's really nice. At the same time, having worn these a lot myself, this functionality works pretty well, but it doesn't always stay in that position. If you're getting a little bit overzealous in your pants and that zipper flips down, they will open up again, as I've shown in the B-roll, but it's really not that big of a deal. And honestly, it's something that's like so nice and simple and implicit that 
it makes it kind of overtake the downside, the con, I guess you could say. So I think that that's something that's really nice and fun to work with. I wanted to bring up something that I didn't necessarily bring up in my SJ30 video, but these are, like I said earlier, a Stotts pant and the jacket is made out of Stotts and Stotts is a ventile cotton. And the way that ventile cotton works when it's in water and rain is that once the water actually hits and kind of absorbs into the jacket, the fibers stretch out so that the water will not be allowed to go through. It's the water kind of making the cotton a little bit less porous. So then that way it tightens up and the water doesn't get all the way through to your skin. So the thing that's nice about wearing a Stotts like jacket or a Stotts like pants is that you can have water hit them. It might feel like it's kind of soaking in a little bit, but it will never completely get down to your skin. You'll have the coldness of water. You'll have that general sensation, but you won't actually become wet on the inside. And that's something that's really nice. It's something that I like in particular because when it's warmer out, I can wear these cotton pants and still feel like I'm not necessarily in a, a like a more stereotypical tech wear fit, like all rainproof, all waterproof, what have you. I have that nice breathability of cotton, but then if I bring it into a wetter scenario or a colder scenario, particularly wetter scenario, I have that waterproofness that protects me, but not necessarily at the same degree as like a Gore-Tex or a dry skin might. It's a good middle ground fabric for practically everything. All right, all right, I am very sorry, everybody. I'm filming this part at a different time of day, so I apologize if there's any lighting differences, but now that I've got all the details of the pants out of the way, I wanted to talk about how exactly I would style these dudes. Now, the thing I like about these pants in regards to the entire acronym pant lineup is that I feel like they're a little bit more like normal than other pants. I think that there's a decent amount of quote unquote normal looking pants in the uh, 20s and below in the acronym pant lineups. I think that a lot of the more kind of classic silhouetted stuff is pretty easy to style, maybe just a little bit different in terms of how it fits in the seat as well as the leg, what have you. But these work in a multitude of things. Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of designers like Helmut Lang and Issei Miyake do flight pants. And this silhouette is not far off from something that they might do. So these pants work into a variety of silhouettes and it can not only find itself in tech wear, but it can also find itself in a lot of avant-garde fits and just more casual stuff by and large. So I'm gonna show you a few different fits that kind of bridge the gap between all of those things, I hope at least. And let me know what you guys think about them in particular. I, I think I'm happy with what I came up with, but there's always room for improvement. Um, and this is just exactly how I would style. I like what I came up with. Uh, it's not for everybody, fashion is subjective, but let's get into how exactly I styled these. So for the first fit, I've got something that honestly is pretty much just like a bouncer look. My thought process with this fit is that it's a little bit more on the streetwear end of things. It's a pretty kind of typical silhouetted outfit, but it's just unique in terms of the details and the very minute elements of it. So I thought it was fun regardless. And this is something that I would wear out if I was going to a bar or something similar. On top, I've got the Balenciaga sunglasses. These are a super thin pair of sunglasses. I've got a very typical Dickies work jacket that I stole from a friend of mine. I've got the pants. And then I've got the Doc Martens and the PW variant, which just means that it doesn't have the yellow stitching that a typical pair of Doc Martens would. I really like this fit. I've actually worn this when I've done bouncing at events and that kind of thing. But like I mentioned earlier, it's something that I like because the silhouette is pretty nice and simple and it really relies on the details to have it kind of pop out. The Dickies work jacket has a nickel plated zipper similar to the pants. So you've got that little bit of matchy matchiness going on. And then the shoes have this chunkier quality to them, but by having the zipper done at that halfway zipper point, you get this cool little pillowing effect on the shoes so that the pant have a really cool silhouette overall. I brought in the buttons on the Dickies work jacket so it kind of cinches in a little bit tight, but that's a little bit, you know, like iffy. You don't need to necessarily do that. On top of that, you could wear this silhouette without the jacket with it on. I think that this is also a situation where you could potentially wear a bomber jacket. I just didn't want to wear it because I wore it in my last fit video. But there's a lot of variety that you can use with this, but the general head to toe situation that I had going on was this very kind of serious, very utilitarian look with the work jacket, the pants, et cetera. It's, I, I mentioned earlier that it was a streetwear fit, but reflecting on it now, it's definitely more of a, uh, a workwear fit, obviously, because of Doc Martens, Dickies, what have you. And I think that the pants itself and the details that they have kind of uh, lift it a little bit. So that's the first outfit, and we're gonna move on to the second outfit now. For the second outfit, this is the one that's gonna be very polarizing for some people, but I thought it'd be fun regardless. On top, I've got the Margiela Mikita sunglasses. 
Uh, I've got a Hanes singlet or a, a wife beater. Um, I've got a vintage military trench coat that I got at my friend's pop-up. I've got the pants and then personally my uh, favorite element of the outfit, I've got my random identities boots, which are a very high heeled leather boot. Now this is something that really kind of bridges on the realm of like a Rick Owens or I guess like a Margiela kind of look. Um, high heeled boots are something that have had a little bit of a moment just with the re-editioning of the men's tabby boot uh, from Margiela. Now with Galliano at the helm of Margiela, we're seeing a lot more feminine qualities to the men's element of the brand. So heels kind of had that moment because the tabbies were given a two and a half inch heel and these boots are like on steroids. They've got the three and a half inch heel. So these are a really high heeled boot. They're similar to the tabbies like I mentioned. They're similar to the Larry boots that Rick Owens has. And I wanted to have a fit that kind of bordered into that realm because the flight pant details are interesting in the fact that they're utilitarian, yes, but you could also kind of border it on that, that kind of kinky look as well, which I like to experiment with sometimes because of the big zipper on the front. So this works well with the trench coat, yes, but the way that I really like to wear it is without the trench coat and have it just be the singlet, the pants, the boots, the sunglasses, and maybe like a little bit of rings and uh, necklaces, what have you. Uh, I really like this fit. I, it's it's all black again, yes, but I really do like the way that it looks from head to toe. I have the zippers at the bottom done up a, uh, a little bit. Uh, by done up, I mean they're just halfway zipped up so that they kind of have a little bit of a straighter fit to the leg and kind of conceal the boot right where I want them to. I have the zipper down so it cuts off where the boot begins and the leg ends and I like the way that that interacts. And then you really got the interesting details of the pants, the really high heel, so you got that interesting quality to it and you can show off a little bit of your shoulders with the Hanes, what have you. This fit definitely isn't for everybody. This is just the way that I would want to style it myself. I've done this fit for more summery, more warm days while still kind of having that attitude filled black sort of nature that the first fit had. And I really like it. So that's the way that I would style this second outfit. Let me know how you guys feel. It's obviously gonna be a bit polarizing, but you know, whatever. Now moving on to the third fit, I've got something that isn't quite exciting, not necessarily as exciting as the second one, but it's something that falls a little bit more in line with a quote unquote tech wear fit. And it's something that I would wear in the scenario of just like going out to uh, go on a, well, on a hike or run errands or honestly just do something where I'm going to get coffee with the friends and have a slightly more elevated fit, but it's not necessarily something that's really out there. On top, I've got the sweatshirt that I'm wearing right now for this video. It's a Baldwin sweatshirt that is in an extra large size. I'm normally a medium and I cropped it so that it sits way, way, way more high up at the waist and it's got a really wide body. I've got the pants and then I've got my 11 by BBS shoes, the Boris Bidhan Saberi uh, shoes, the Speed Cross 3 is the model. And then uh, on top, I've got the Mikita sunglasses again. I really like this fit because you get that cool sort of duality between the whites and then the black pants. And I think that has like a cool quality to it. The thing that I like about this fit is that the pants can be zipped down in the jogger format and you still have that more hiker looking fit, a little bit more athletic, a little bit more, I'm, I'm about to go out and do some running kind of situation. But you can also unzip the leg a little bit, have it be a little bit more straighter, a little bit more relaxed, and it has a kind of quirkier attitude to it. Um, I would wear this fit, bro. I would honestly wear this fit every day. This is the kind of fit that I would wear every day. And while I didn't have any bags in any of these fits, not only would I wear them in the previous fits as well, uh, like a 3A1 or a 5TS, but I would wear, definitely wear it in this fit. I think that the addition of a bag here could look really nice, but I just didn't wanna, I don't wanna oversaturate the idea that I just wear 3A1s every day I go out, what have you. This works without a 3A1. I think it stands up a little bit better on its own that way. So yeah. I like the sweatshirt a lot because it has that cropped effect to it, a little bit wider. I know a lot of people enjoy that silhouette with their sweatshirts more often nowadays. And I think that it works well in this fit because the pants are a little bit wide, but not quite that wide. And they sit on a chunkier shoe and then this just kind of tops it off. So you get really good proportion play, but it's not necessarily so out there that it feels like you're really going for an avant-garde kind of outfit on this. So. Uh, yeah, I think that this is the most wearable out of the three fits personally and a little bit more on the casual end. So those are the P26S, one of the more underrated pants from Acronym overall, I would say. I think that's, I'm just kind of spouting that out, but I think that these pants are pretty underrated. A lot of Acronym pants kind of go under the radar. I know that the P23s, the P30s, P17s, 
And some of the other silhouettes tend to be very popular with acronym and these might go under the radar, but these have a lot of cool details to them. I like how these work across a really wide spectrum of outfits. It's not really implicitly tech wear. It's not necessarily something that really defines you to having this sort of ninja look. These are a more military looking pant and they have a utilitarian quality to them. And I think they work across a wide spectrum of looks because they have that broadness to them. They can be styled that way. And that's something that I really like about them. It's a bummer that I'm letting them go, but I'm excited about what's coming in. So maybe I'll make a video on those when they come through, but that's it for these pants guys. Um, keep your eyes on another video as it comes up. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna start doing it on one of my bags. And I think that's gonna be it. Uh, I haven't said this in any of my other videos, but if you want to stay tuned with what I've got coming out, just do what you typically do. Other channels, like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. You guys have been doing it. I, I appreciate it. I didn't wanna say it, but I felt like it's like a requirement. It's just one of those, those implicit requirements of YouTube. So thank you very much for watching as always and stay whatever.